distribution manager's office. Sorry, Norman. Jim's in a meeting with a couple of our overseas people. Can I get him to call you back? Shouldn't be too long. Just a quick chat, he said. Frankly, I'm telling you, it's just one big mess. No liaison, no information, no service, nothing. And what we needed was advice. Simple as that. What did we get? Like Liz, nothing. It's just not working out, Jim. We're being conned. Yes, conned. That's it exactly. Us too. Well, I must say, it doesn't sound as if things are particularly organized, but uh, what makes you think I can help? Let me explain, Jim. This week at the London Sales Conference, I was talking to the managing director about the German division's export drive to the Far East. How's it going, he said. Fine, I said, except for the shipping arrangements. All right. Part of the trouble may be our own fault. We should have given the whole thing more consideration instead of taking it for granted. Any problems, he said. See Jim Davidson. Same here. Okay, I'm on the American side, but freight-wise, the same old problems. See Jim Davidson. Fair enough, but uh, let's get things straight. As far as freight is concerned, I'm basically UK now. Oh, come on, Jim. You still know the international scene like the back of your hand. We all know that. If that is meant to be a compliment, Liz, flattery will get you everywhere. You know that. <laughs> I'll tell you what surprises me, though. You're our chief buyer in Los Angeles. You're our export manager in Frankfurt. I would have thought that you both got better things to do than bother with the day-to-day -day details of distribution. I couldn't agree more. Do you think we really want to? Right now, we've got no choice, Jim. Let me give you a rundown on the L.A. operation. You'll see what I mean. When we set up on the West Coast, it just had to be in L.A. Okay, it's a great place to live and all that. But what's more important, its communications with the rest of the world are fantastic. And if you're an import-export, that's the name of the game. Shipping stuff in and out ought to be simple. But it's not happening. Ask Bernie Schwartz. He's the guy who runs our department. He's a nice guy, Bernie. He loves his wife and his kids and his dog in that order. But his job's a nightmare. Chasing this shipment, chasing that shipment. The guy's never off the telephone. Now, what does he get for his trouble? Ulcers. Oh, we don't just need advice. We need a damn miracle. Well, miracles are hardly my line, but I'll see what I can do. Oh, you know what I mean. It all ought to be so simple. Distribution is a complicated business, don't forget. That's no reason why people should make it more complicated than it is already. It's not as if we're asking for the impossible. Well, before we go any further, perhaps you'd better tell me exactly what you are asking for. Then perhaps I can make some suggestions. You mean you want me to tell you my fantasies? <laughs> this could be good, Jim. Yes, well, we'll save that for later, Liz. How about trying to guess the fantasies of your man in Los Angeles? Well, I'll try. Now, let me see. I know at this moment Bernie is waiting for my Hong Kong consignment to arrive, so I guess he's hoping and praying that everything will turn out right this time. It all started last fall. That was the first time I'd ever been to Hong Kong. Oh, what a place. You got no idea till you see for yourself. I just loved it. No matter where you look, everybody's in business. Just buy a hand cart and start trading. Maybe you'll end up a millionaire with a string of racehorses in Happy Valley. In Hong Kong, the sky's the limit. I was staying on the island, and uh, most days I caught the ferry across to Kowloon. That's where I was looking for a supplier. I found him, too. Just what I wanted. Right product, right price, right delivery dates. I just couldn't believe my luck. Everything was great. Until I moved my consignment over to a warehouse on the other side of town for a shipment. You see, I thought one forwarder would be pretty much like any other, and you can't be more naive than that. I should have got hold of the name of a really good company. You know, someone who's really on the ball. Because at the end of the day, it's us who are left picking up the tab. I mean, it'd be great for a start if the warehouse could be told what time the truck would be arriving for pickup. That way the consignment and all the paperwork could be ready and waiting. No hold-ups are hanging around to get into the dispatch area. The driver would be in and out and on his way in no time. It's no use the guy just rolling up when he feels like it. Oh, yeah. Documents. All over the world, customs men just love documents. You miss out one piece of paper, they almost take it personally. Is it asking too much for the driver to make sure he collects the right documents? And maybe even know when something's wrong? We 
we'd like our goods to be handled well. Okay, I know we're not shipping Ming vases around the world, but our stuff's just as valuable to us. It'd be great if the forwarder had people who really cared whether a consignment arrived in one piece or not. And it's not only the goods that have to be handled properly. What about all the paperwork? The right documentation, complete it accurately, that travels with the goods right through to the destination. Surely it ought to be the forwarder's responsibility to see that everything runs as smoothly as possible. Okay. Ah, got it. Okay. And is it asking too much for flight details to be confirmed as quickly as possible, to us as well as to the shipper? Even unavoidable flight delays. Well, I guess that's about it. Except that like most businesses, we can never have enough information about what's going on. So I suppose the ideal forwarder really should have a pretty sharp communications network. Maybe I'm asking too much, but I think that's the kind of forwarder Bernie needs. What he's getting is something else altogether. A truck that drops in when it just happens to be around the neighborhood. Even if they gave you the time, you can bet your last dollar it'll be late. And you should see that thing. I used to think a junk was some kind of a boat. Oh, it does the company image a power of good. And as far as documentation's concerned, forget it which is what they do most of the time anyway. And if they do remember, the chances are it'll never be seen again. No joking. That's the reality. Come. Sorry to disturb you, Mr. Davidson, but there's a telex for Miss Harding. It's from Los Angeles. Thank you. Oh, it's from Bernie. It must be good news. No, it's bad news. Only half the Hong Kong shipment we've been waiting for has arrived. Three days after the flight was advised. What's more, the customs house broker can't trace the documents at the forwarder's agent in L.A. What did I tell you? So what's Bernie going to do about it? <laughs> Search me. Same as always, I suppose. Look, the shipment's two pieces, ten kilos. Flight was KE684 on the 28th. The house airway bill number is 4208... Poor Bernie. It's going to take him quite some time to sort that lot out. And what about you, Heinz? Well, I'm afraid our experiences are just as depressing. We're interested in exporting a whole range of goods to the Far East, particularly Japan. And that's a tough market. Lots of competition. What we desperately need is local information. Customs regulations, contacts, licenses, legal procedures, delivery problems, everything. Oh, sure, the commercial department at the embassy can bury us in information, but that's not the kind of information we really need. And the forwarders we're using at the moment seem to know little more than we do. I tell you, until I met an old business friend of mine in the hotel this week, I used to think maybe this is normal. He's also American, Liz, from Cleveland, Ohio. Harris often invited me out there, but it's never been possible. Anyway, he never stops talking about his business, so I ask him how he manages his distribution. He's built up the firm by moving away from just supplying a limited local market to exporting all over Europe. Now, like us, he has his eyes on Japan. That's great, that's great. He completed his first big deal last month, and one of the first people he saw was his freight forwarder. Some local firm, he said. Anyway, he'd been dealing with them for several years. Harry had been getting good advice from this forwarder right from the time he started negotiating his contract. As soon as it was signed, he went to see them again. This time he wanted to make firm plans. He knew that the same forwarder had developed his network of offices around the world, including Japan. One in Narita, where the international airport is, one in Baraki, where the customs clearance is, and the other in downtown Tokyo itself. Well, that sounds pretty good, but can I get my freight delivered from there? Thank you, Laura. Yes, you can, because MSAS has truck service daily out of those three areas. Narita, Baraki, and Tokyo itself. He got accurate information about import and customs regulations, routings, transit times and rates. Many of the things I want to know and never seem to be able to find out. Looks pretty good. 
I think it's going to work. The equipment that we do have here enables us to ship both large and small shipments anywhere around the world. Once he has outlined the problem, he hands it all over to this forwarder. All the advice on packaging, handling and insurance and all the drudgery with the paperwork. Harry markets the product and his forwarder moves it round the world. The container over here is what we call our LD3 container. Okay, so what it really means is that Harry's distribution looks after itself. Or at least it's well looked after for him. He never has to get involved, just leaves it to his forwarder. If there is an occasional problem, they're the people who sort it out. Not like our present forwarder. The way things are, we're almost doing their job for them. And the house airway bill number is 420855. And the master airway bill is 1806250672. Now, do I get the shipment or don't I? Well, at least you've both got a good idea of the kind of forwarder you're looking for. That's something. And what you say does make good sense. Mind you, if you're after really top people, there are a few other things to bear in mind. Keep your distribution simple. Choose a firm that's local not only to you, but local to your suppliers and customers as well. In other words, in our kind of business, choose someone with a global network and their own offices and staff in all the main areas where you operate. The local feel, people and local knowledge of the small forwarder are just as important as the international spread of a large one. I suppose what it boils down to is that people like us want the best of both worlds. Maggie, how are you? Hello, Mary of MSAS. Yes, I have the quota that you need to go to Thailand. I'm going to talk to Mr. Chauvier, Director of Transport. Thank you. I have your flight information here for your shipment to Hong Kong. Hello, this is Doris at MSAS Customs Brokers. I'd like some flight information, please. Take your Hong Kong shipment, Liz. This is what should have happened when it reached Los Angeles. This is the kind of treatment that Bernie has a right to expect. You should have been advised beforehand, of course, that your shipment would be on this particular flight. There's no reason why your cargo can't be cleared in 24 hours or so, always supposing the documents are in order. Problems of customs clearance with all the associated paperwork can be a thing of the past. That's why you should try and get the one forwarder to handle the shipments for you. Okay, let's look at cart number 12. Cart number 12. Yeah, this one right here. Hong Kong to Los Angeles, door to door. Let your forwarder handle the loss. And if things go wrong, be quick to let you know and sort it out. A good forwarder will thrive on responsibility and make the life of someone like Bernie Schwartz a whole lot easier. Mr. Schwartz, Bernie Moncaster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you are. This is the kind of service a really good forwarder should give you. You see, I think that freight forwarding is all about people. You've got to deal with people who will help you, people you can get on with, people you can trust. It's a business where computers are speeding up the flow of documents and information. For us, it provides a quicker service with less possibility of mistakes being made. As customers, we want flexibility. And that can only be achieved by staff who all work with the same helpful attitude. You have a consignment of restricted articles? Yes, we can help on that. Do you want it picked up today? We want the same degree of involvement, the same standard of service wherever in the world we operate. I see, you're sending it to Zudorf. And where's the cargo to go to? Find the right team. That's what we have to do. Hello, MSAS here. Could you give me a post flight, please? <laughs>
I think we've just about covered everything. To be honest, I'm not sure whether I've told you any more than you already know. The only problem left is where the heck do you find a company like that? The miracle that doesn't exist. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Jim Davidson, you're holding out on us. You've got someone in mind. Well, uh, I suppose they're British. British owned, but they operate internationally. Well, have we heard of them? Possibly, yes. They've been around since about 1970. They've grown very fast, but still new enough not to have developed bad habits. Look, you leave all this with me for a bit. I'll make a couple of phone calls, come back after lunch, and maybe I'll have the answer. Okay, that's a deal. Let's go eat. Right. See you later. <laughs> See you. Right. Lynn, get me Mike at MSAS. I don't know about you, but I've got a funny feeling our troubles could be over. Maybe you're right. Let's hope so. See, Jim Davidson. <laughs> Maybe the old man knows what he's talking about after all. Mike, fine. How are you? Listen, do you people have offices in Frankfurt and Los Angeles? Good, yes, I thought so. No, no, not for me. A couple of our overseas people based out there are having a hell of a time with the freight forwarders they're using, and I thought perhaps you could help. <laughs> Better still, get your local managers to pop in and see them. If they need any convincing, that'll do it. Yes, of course. Liz Harding, she's chief buyer in Los Angeles, and Heinz Miller, export manager Frankfurt. Oh, and Mike, if you want to make yourselves really popular, get your man in Los Angeles to go and see a chap called Bernie Schwartz. Yeah.